that was the first place team in the league coming to the weekend. You feel like you got a contender? Oh, I mean, geez, we like our ball club. We've liked our ball club the whole time. You know, Arizona State's played well for, uh, the whole season. I don't know what the record is. It's good, though. It's really good, and they're a good team. So, you know, we showed up ready to play today, and tomorrow's a new day. You guys have capitalized on two out rallies. As a team coming in tonight, you were hitting 274. Again, you do it today with that seven-run fourth. Just what does that say about your team and your guys' your guys' ability to, to you know buckle down when it gets tough and get some runs across? I don't know. I mean, they're good with two outs, apparently. You know, I mean, then they've been getting better. Um, hopefully, we can continue to do that. That's a sign of a good team. You know, when you get the guys out there, situational hitting, you you want to uh, come through on those spots and. We've been doing it more often than not, and we're seeing progress. We're still not perfect, but um, we're seeing progress in those directions, yeah. Stoffel now with two big performances yeah. against two of the top teams, not just in the Pac-12, but in the country. What did you see from him tonight? He just pitched, you know, he pitched well. He didn't. He probably didn't have his best stuff today, but, I mean, he pitched well, and he was competitive, and, um, you know, another Friday night win, kind of whole hum for Jace. I mean, he's been doing a fantastic job, and just excited about his development, it's great. What does it say about him? Because it does seem like he was fighting a little bit, you know, I don't know exactly what, but it just seemed, he was fighting a well, little bit and he still buckled down and yeah, like in the quality start. Yeah, like in the third, he, you know, he was he was a little bit wild early in the third and stuff, and then he just, I think he focused on some mechanical things and was able to get himself back in the sink, and I don't know what all the specifics were with that, but you know, bottom line is, is he got himself, um, I think almost seven innings of work again tonight and, and did a fantastic job, got the W. Drew Cowley with two home runs today. How nice is it to see him locked in so much after a slow start to the season? Um, yeah, Drew's a special kid. You know, I mean, he really is. He's a neat, just a neat kid himself, and he works his tail off, and fantastic student. He's a graduate student, and, and uh, I mean, he's going to get a master's degree from the University of Oregon, and, and he's just a fantastic kid to show up to be able to see every single day. You know, never brings a problem to your, to your desk, and, and he's really good at what he does. You got some arms late in the game, some experience on Friday night of a Pac-12 series. What can it mean for those guys long term? I don't know. You know, I don't know. The more you get pitchers out there and people in the games, usually the better that they get, you know, and the, at least the more comfortable they get. Um, and they're, you know, when you get a chance to be able to get people in there, you do. Uh, and you got to try to balance that because, you know, it's, it's the Pac-12, and man, these teams are good, you know, and that's a that's one heck of an offense right there. Those guys can hit, you know. I think last wasn't it last Friday that that uh, you know um, Oregon State was winning, and they came back and almost almost won that game, and I think they were winning by nine or ten runs or something like that, and then these guys came back and almost almost beat them, and I think their coach even said in one of his press conferences that he felt like he should have beat they should have beat him that night um, and come back. So this is a dangerous offense, and it's not something that you can mess around with, and. And, um, and and treat with disrespect, that's for sure. They're good. Riku got a couple hits tonight, a couple RBIs with that ground rule double. Just He's been going pretty well at the plate recently. How much does that help your lineup? And you know, how important is it for to start off this series with him getting going? Really important. You know, that kid is, is really fast. And when you get speed on the bases, you know, him and Colby Shade. Shade had another good day today. Um, and he probably feels like, boy, I could have even had a better day. Because if he puts a ball in play there in his last that bad, he probably picks up another RBI or has a chance to at least. Um, so I don't know. Just when you get speed on the bases, um, it can be a lot of fun, and especially Riku and Colby and, and Betcher and these guys that can really run. I mean, it's uh, you know you can score on on usually balls that aren't uh, scoring potential type plays um, that you know those guys can score on. The dimensions of this park have changed the last couple of years, but the ball shade hit, the ball wall shit. I mean, those are going to be out regardless. Is that plan of attack? Is that strength and conditioning? I mean, you, you guys have been hitting some bombs. I don't know what it is. You know, we've heard a lot of lot of stuff out there. What, you know, I know Daryl Hunter does it. It's strength and conditioning. Nobody's better than Daryl Hunter. Um, you know, uh, I, I think Jack Martyr knows what he's doing with hitting. I think Brett Thomas, when it comes to analytics, I think these guys are, are the best. And so I'd give them as much credit as possible because these guys are in the development business with these kids and they're doing a great job. You know, there's all kind of other things out there with speculation on, on you know, the balls being tighter wound and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know what the ball's all about. You know, I got no clue about any of that. I see on a daily basis what the staff members that are on my staff do, and their work ethic is extreme. You know, their commitment level is, is second to none, and they're smart. And I think that their, you know, their relationships with the players are, are what they value a lot, and they spend a lot of time with it. It shows. That Walsh home run late in the game has been kind of scuffling recently. Just oh, yeah. how important is that for, for him to kind of give him some momentum going into two and, games two and three of this series? Well, time will tell. You know, I mean, he missed a couple pitches. He felt like he could hit earlier. And, you know, um, 
Jacob's a really talented player, you know, and, and so how, how does that help him going forward? You know, again, time will tell, but that was a heck of a swing on the ball. How about Cromwick laying down a bunch single? He's also kind of in scuffling a little bit. Um, was, it, was that something he did on his own? Or? Yeah, I mean, Joe's just trying to help the team win. And, you know, ironically, he's an unselfish player. He does what he did right there. He got himself a base hit out of that. And then it set up a table for the big inning. Um, and so a lot of times the bunt does turn into a bigger inning or some kind of a smaller play like a bunt. And today it was Joe's unselfishness that helped us. Eight of nine starters recorded a hit today, and even Grant walked twice. How does the energy in the dugout build as everyone's finding success throughout the game? Oh, it's fun. You know, it's just fun. These guys are a lot of fun to be around, you know, and, and uh, I don't know. When the success gets spread out, it's a lot. It's, it's even more gratifying, you know, because you want these kids to succeed so bad. So, yeah.